Oh my god. Look at that. Wow. Oh shit. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. My name is Arch TV, and I'm here to showcase Winter Convergence Festival and New World in 2022, and they'll be ending early 2023. I'll show you guys all the tips and tricks on where to farm and what to look forward to. Let's go dive right in and show you what it's all about. Here you're going to get a chance to see it. It starts on December 6th and ends on January 10th. You're going to be able to check out the beautiful looking Winter Village, as well as all the decorations of every single town, as well as fighting the Winter Warrior, which is fairly difficult. With a small group, you're going to be looking forward to seeing a large group working together on that and some epic rewards. If you wish to pick up some items in the cash shop, these are the three different looks for the Winter Convergence, as well as a Cocoa Platter and the Rocking Horse. All right, let's go and hop right in. Ew. Here you're going to see the Winter Village. You're going to notice that there's four different Winter Village locations. You're going to see one in Brightwood, as well as Weaver's Fen, Everfall, and Monarch's Bluffs. Here you're going to get a chance to see this bountiful gift sack. In this bountiful gift sack, you'll get about four of them from all four towns daily. Make sure you go collect them. They're about three winter tokens each. You're going to need 25 tokens total to get a premium token. Here at the Winter War Wanderer, you're going to be able to get the quest from him. Every time you kill the Winter Warrior, this individual will be able to give you a new quest every single time. About three times and a bunch of... Uh, reputation as well as loot. We're gonna go dive over to Morningdale and collect our first tree and rotate amongst all of those trees and you're gonna see this exquisite gift pile will offer you about five tokens and at the same time you're gonna get some diamond gypsums about nine of them so you can convert them into three gypsum orbs. About 12 towns total that you can go and teleport to as well as four different winter villages. Once everything has been collected feel free to open them up for a rare opportunity to get another premium token in those boxes. You're going to see about three times of my four of those little uh, gift packages as well as 12 times of my five. This is going to net you approximately two premium tokens daily. And at the same time, you're going to see as we're opening these up, we get lucky in one of these boxes here and get a premium token and a random pattern, which is great towards trying to obtain your rare loot that you can obtain in the Winter Warrior. Here you're going to get a chance to see all the Gleamite locations on the map that you can see at newworldmap.com. One of the cool things that you know is that these don't spawn every single time, but check out this footage right here. I do have to say, this is one of the coolest open world mechanics. Oh, it looks so beautiful. Here you're going to get a chance to go and collect this large Gleamite. This is the most popular item out of all the Gleamite. You must prioritize this one as everyone will beeline it and try to obtain this. I think you can get around 20 to 30 Gleamite per chunk. And there's about five to six of them that drop. And then you'll notice on the road, as you go travel anywhere in the open world and collect items, you're going to see these lost presents. Each lost present will net you one. And then once you collect three lost presents, you'll get one winter token, which is not bad, but not the greatest. But this is a recovered present that you can go and turn back to the winter warrior. So one of the things about the winter warrior, it's, it's going to be more effective if you have a Zerg with you. And to be able to start this, you're going to need at least four players to destroy the rhinestone auras. And so this does not allow you to do this by yourself. You're going to see these avalanches will be exploded and an AoE radius when the Winter Warrior does a move. So you can kill them before the, the Winter Warrior decides to do, use these as bombs around you. And they respawn the same ad, so they're constantly respawning. And you'll notice this boss right here, the Ice Dryad Frost Grip, does a monster AoE slow on all targets around him. And that's going to really screw over your healers because there's a million ads running around trying to kill your healers for pulling all the aggro. So try to kill the frost grip as soon as possible for your whole team. And here's an example of me showing up with just my, you know, healer build, just hanging out, just healing the whole party and realizing I have no idea what the rotations are. This is the first time I met the Winter Warrior and trying to keep everyone alive, including myself and pulling aggro left and right. And I think a lot of people were new to it as well. And then after a while, they became more associated to understanding what to focus on and whatnot. So the mechanics here were fairly new for all of us. And I didn't really didn't really take the Winter Warrior seriously. And I'm noticing more and more I should have in my first approach. And you're seeing these explosive bombs here from the avalanches. And then all of a sudden, just taking AoE damage over and over and over again, not knowing where they're coming from and realizing that the actual Winter Warrior 
himself does a long distance scream, very similar to Genesis's boss. So whatever you possibly do, pay attention to where the Winter Warrior is positioned and not get killed by that scream that it does, that little frost breath. And you're seeing these warrior hail spikes will be translated into winter tokens. Each hail spike is 10 each, and this is exactly where the winter warrior will spawn. You're noticing there's about three spawns in Brimstone Sands, and then there's about three spawns happening almost in every one of those zones between Ebon Scale, Brightwood, Eden Grove, Great Cleave, Shattered Mountain. This is the holiday hut where you can convert everything. And at this holiday hut, you'll get a chance to take those preserved uh, recovered presents for a single token, or those Gleamites, six for a single token, and you'll notice those Warrior Hail Spikes for 10 tokens at the very top. And you'll be able to convert them over, if you want to go back to a premium token, over to a Winter token. They're going to be requiring a Vial of Azoth and 25 Winter tokens. Here at the Winter Wanderer, I want you guys to understand that these tokens are not possible to collect everything in the shop, so do not spend it on any of these meals at the top that are the 33 con food or 33 buff food. And you're going to notice that these are two premium tokens each for these celebrant level uh, uh, parts here. And you're going to be needing those premium tokens to go down the hit list and see that you can get the 2021 give presents emote or you can get the winter wanders coat that we got a long time ago uh but now if you scroll down uh you'll be able to get some unique items that will really benefit you in your endeavors and new world when new things come out if you've already collected everything or you are on the verge of collecting everything you'll see the winter gem is about 20 dollars in the store if you want to purchase your own personal one so they're giving you 15 premium tokens which is literally a grind to obtain which is worthy of that grind and you can get Gleamite Jungle, Throw Snow, and Shrug Dance, which are hilarious. Uh, and then these are the most valuable items in this shop here. And we'll talk more about those valuable items in our second part of the video. Well, I hope that was helpful. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys have any questions or want to see more content like this. Don't forget, there's going to be a part two. We're going to be showcasing what it looks like to buy those materials and craft them. So you can pay attention to which ones are the best for you to craft and how to take advantage of them moving forward towards the next endeavor. Well, we're going to get a chance to read one of the comments from the previous video that we said how to tank a Tempest dungeon and all the in-depth guide on that dungeon expedition. Here we go with Bob. Bob starts off with Sh I couldn't tank Amrine Excavation, but after listening to this handsome devil, Arsh TV, I can tank any dungeon, even Tempest Heart with no problem. Thanks, Bob, for that comment. I look forward to seeing the comments in this video for the next video when I read it at the very end. Take care, everybody. Until next time.